Hey there, how's it going? I really like learning new things, but my schedule at the moment is pretty full, so it's hard to find time to try something new. Last week, I released a video showing the game dev challenges that I was doing on my Twitch stream for a good while. In the video, I said that it became a bit repetitive and I took a break, and replaced the Monday challenge stream with a Monday learning stream. I've already made a video on the few streams that I did starting to look at Unreal Engine 4, which I promise I will be getting back to. But right now, I'm kind of in a check out all the new fun things phase, so I'm just rolling with it. In that video, I made my first 3D game, but I'm an artist, and I started game development to see my art move on screen. And if I'm dipping my toe into 3D, I should probably try some 3D art as well. Luckily, I have Mondays set aside specifically to try out new things, so I looked at two programs over the last couple weeks, Magic of Voxel and Blender. I started with Magic of Voxel because the voxel seems simpler and closer to what I already know. If you aren't familiar with the term voxel, it's basically a 3D pixel. You build whatever 3D shape you're trying to make out of small cubes. When I'm learning a new software, I have a general path that I like to follow, especially with art programs. I usually start by briefly looking up the basics of the tool. Mostly, I just want to know what's available to me and where it is. Then I just jump in with no experience and start poking at things to see what happens. I find this initial time of utter confusion beneficial, actually. The things that I end up figuring out how to do on my own tend to stick better in my mind. And then later when I'm watching tutorials, I better remember explanations if it's telling me how to do something that I struggled with the first time. I don't know if this approach would work for everyone, but for me, it's worked pretty well for the last couple of years. I will say that my experience doing this has changed quite a bit recently now that I'm doing this process on stream. I have the added benefit of just being able to ask my Twitch chat if I need to know something specific, and there's usually somebody in there that knows how to do it and will help me out. Although Magic of Voxel wasn't too difficult for me to get my head around, so I got a bit ambitious right off the bat. Instead of starting with something simple like a chair or a house or a tree, I decided I wanted to make one of my monkey characters that I use pretty much everywhere, but this time in 3D. I should be clear here, I've never touched any 3D medium that includes in real life. The closest I've ever really done to sculpting was playing with Play-Doh as a kid, and I played with it a bit more when my daughter was younger, but overall, not much experience. I will say the transition to voxels was pretty natural for me though. Now instead of having four sides to attach one pixel to another, there were six. I started by cutting out some features I knew I would need later, and then extruding the monkey to give it some depth. While trying to line up the ears on each side, I was told that there's a mirror function, which was awesome. Just make sure that when you mirror it, you mirror in the right axis. This poor monkey. From here on out, it was mostly the same process I used for creating a pixel art character. Build the base silhouette and then start adding and subtracting until it kind of looks like what I want. Making nice curves in pixel art can be tricky at times. Having to worry about that curve in more than one dimension was a fair bit trickier. But after a good amount of trial and error, especially on the tail, I was able to make something that looks a good bit like my monkey, but in 3D. It's definitely not perfect, and there are still a few planes that I'm not super happy with, but for a first attempt after opening the program, I was very pleased. I duplicated the monkey out four times and changed each one to a color from Monkeys with Guns, and I called it a day. Working with voxels felt pretty comfortable to me. I was able to translate a lot of what I've learned doing pixel art already over pretty well. The next week, though, we're jumping into a software that's much more complex. Blender lets you do so, so much more than just voxel. And because of the added complexity of the program, I did watch a very quick Basics of Blender tutorial. Well, kind of. It was a 40-minute video, and I watched the first 20 minutes on 2x speed. Basically just to learn where the main tools were. And then I jumped in, and it was like when I started with Unreal Engine 4. There were just so many options that it was a bit overwhelming. But I went about doing my usual poking at stuff, and I was so good that I was able to make this monkey right away. I'm just kidding, of course. This monkey is a default object that you can just place in. Oh, why am I doing that to the eyes? To try out the different tool options, I just started making objects and seeing what happens. At this point, I had no idea how to lock things to an axis or anything. If you aren't familiar with 3D, there are three axes or dimensions you can move something on. X, Y, and Z, or Z for some of you. Moving things around like this took a fair bit of getting used to for me. Also, for those of you that already know how Blender works, I didn't grasp the concept of object mode and edit mode for a good while. So you may be cringing at what I do for a little bit, sorry. After my fun of manipulating shapes, I decided I was going to start fresh and try to make something. Because I was feeling overwhelmed, I decided not to go as crazy with the monkey this time. I'm definitely not as confident here as I was with voxels. So I decided I was going to make a chair. You know, the most basic rectangular cuboid of a chair. A flat seat, a flat back, and four legs. By the way, I'm sorry for the little avatars floating in the middle of the screen. I put an invisible block somewhere on the screen every time I stream and the viewers try to find it. And I accidentally put it over the window this stream and I didn't move it until later. My apologies if it's distracting. But we did get this fun moment with the chair out of it. After the chair came out adequately, I started to feel a little more confident with the tools and controls. So I thought maybe I can step it up a little. 
I basically have monkeys attached to me now, so I decided I was going to make the monkey head and try and put it on like a little pedestal altar type thing. And it went so badly. Looking back, most of the issues came from the fact that I was in edit mode the whole time, trying to make a couple of different objects come together. It was really frustrating trying to make this thing work. And since it wasn't looking good and I was losing interest in it, I decided to delete it and start fresh again. Because I like to try new software out blind, I have to make sure that I don't allow myself to get frustrated or angry or stuck on something in particular. So when I hit a wall, I just move on and try something else, and I can always come back to it later. With a fresh canvas, I decided to try to make something that could pretty much be built out of basic shapes, but I'd be able to add more to it later if I wanted to. And I decided to go with a sword. And I felt like I was off to the races pretty decently well when I started. I made a long cylinder for the handle, I created a cone and tweaked it a bit to make a pretty good looking pommel, I started making a really blocky cross guard, and as I was trying to follow some suggestions from people in chat on how to make the blade, a fundamental part of Blender just clicked for me. Because you're in edit mode. Well, wouldn't I be making all of this stuff together in edit mode? Or do you not make, uh, or am I not meant to be making all of these pieces inside edit mode? Should I be making each of these pieces individually and then putting them together in object mode? Am I just, am I just doing this completely wrong? Is that, is that how you're supposed to do this? Have I, have, have I just completely misunderstood that? That would make sense. Basically, in Blender, there are two modes. There are probably more, but for the main editing part right here, there's just the two that we're going to worry about. Object mode and edit mode. You're meant to build and assemble things in object mode and edit the individual components of each object inside of edit mode. When in edit mode, you can add different modifiers that will just affect that one individual component. I'm sure if I had followed a tutorial, I would have learned this really quickly, but boy did doing it wrong really hammer home why it works a certain way. So I started again in the proper mode, this time with the blade. I was able to get the point at the end of the blade, but I really struggled to figure out how to actually do an edge. Like I said before, when I'm first exploring a piece of software, I try to keep myself moving in a direction of interest. If I start to get frustrated or lost, which is expected in a blind test of anything, I just move on to the next bit and note what I need to look up later. Whereas I lost interest in the pedestal earlier, I still wanted to make the sword. So I left the blade as is and moved on to remake the other sword parts in the correct mode this time. And this went pretty well, and I was able to make a handle and hilt. I slapped it together and briefly looked at it in render mode with a bit of color, but not too deeply. From never having touched Blender at all about four hours earlier to an okay-ish sword, I was pretty happy. A week passed, and I didn't have any time to get back into Blender until the following Monday. I was able to watch a good number of the Blender Guru's beginner donut tutorial, which gave me a lot more of the basic information I needed to maneuver around Blender. So with some new knowledge, I set out to make a better sword than last time. The blade came first and came out much, much better. And from there, I followed a lot of what I did the last time with much more control over what I was doing. I was told pretty early on when starting with Blender that I should really start working on memorizing the hotkeys. And oh man, they weren't kidding. The problem is Blender has like 5,000 hotkeys. Here's a quick list of the basic ones you really should learn right away to do stuff. Press G to move, R to rotate, or S to scale. After pressing one of those keys, you can press X, Y, or Z to lock the effect to that axis. Or shift X, Y, or Z to exclude it. If you want the effect to be specific, you can type in numbers now to adjust it. You can right click to cancel, tab to switch between object and edit mode, middle mouse to move the camera around a point, shift middle mouse button to move the camera left and right like a pan. To switch between view modes like wireframe, solid, render, hold Z and select from the pop-up. The rest of these are for the number keypad only. This doesn't work with the normal number keys. Select an object and press period to focus on it. One to see it from the front view, three for a side view, and seven for a top view. And the cheat sheet I have with the rest of the hotkeys is seven pages long. So I will say, it's a lot to keep track of when you're first starting out. But if you keep plugging away at it, they start to stick. After finishing up the sword, chat demanded a monkey head pommel, so I duplicated it out, added the monkey head, and stuck it on. Feeling pretty confident, I next started on a shield to go with the sword. And that didn't go so well. I still didn't know how to get the right kind of curves out of the shapes, apparently. Again, I try not to spend too much time on anything when I get stuck, so I abandoned it pretty quickly because I knew I wasn't going to be able to make it look anywhere near what I wanted. So to avoid the frustration, I went over to add color and shine to the swords, because that sounded fun. I followed some of the steps I saw in the tutorial to add planes as a floor and a background. I added some basic colors to the sword and messed with how shiny they were, and then I moved the camera and lights around a little bit. And I made my first image in Blender. It's definitely not the best, and as a photographer, I really want to get in there and do so much more with the lighting and camera positioning, but I still don't fully get how to work it all yet. I'm definitely going to have to do some learning to figure out how to take some nice photographs inside Blender. After this though, I still had a little bit of time left on my stream, and I wanted to try something else. A Goomba was suggested in chat, and for some reason, that one stuck out to me and I figured I'd give it a go. 
Of course, I struggled right from the get-go to get the head body shape of the Goomba just right. And I didn't end up coming super close, but it does look like a pretty good bell. I figured this was the best I could do, but I wasn't actually frustrated, so I didn't want to stop and try something else. I figured I would just push on because this still sounded like something fun to do. So it was decided we were making a cheap Goomba knockoff. A Foomba, if you will. The body and feet came next, which were fairly simple and basically the same thing, just squished in different sizes. After sticking those on, the eyes and teeth were a bit tricky to place, but overall not too difficult. The eyebrows took a fair bit of experimenting, and in the end, they ended up coming a bit angry, but I learned how to manipulate shapes and cut them and do a little bit more manipulation than I thought I would. I was getting close to running out of time for the stream, so just in case, I took the Goomba over into render mode and started adding colors, which really helped make it look more like a Goomba and less like a bell with feet. After adding the color, I had just enough time to also add in the pupils and a mouth. And with that, our Fumba is 100% ready for the discount bin. I added it over to the image with the sword. And these are the results of my first 8 hours or so playing around in Blender. I have to say, for myself, I'm really happy with it. The swords look like swords, and the Fumba looks like a Fumba. As I play with Blender and 3D more, I know I'm just going to get better and better. For those of you that know what you're doing, I know these are very basic, but making these taught me so much. I'm still very much a beginner here, and I've really enjoyed playing with the third dimension. I do still think that I prefer 2D, and it's what I'm going to continue working in most moving forward. But there's a handful of things that I want to try that can't be done in 2D, so it's great to know that I'm on my way to those projects. Alright, final thoughts after three streams of making 3D art. I really enjoyed it, and I know it's a given, but it made me look at the art differently. In 2D, you're trying to simulate dimension and depth in a character. In 3D, you have it, so you just need to make sure that that looks good, which is a whole different way of working. But playing in 3D has really opened up so many ideas of other things that I can do. Next up, I want to start learning how to take a 3D object I make, animate it, and then add it to Unreal to make it come to life. And I'll be making a video on that at some point when that happens. I will say, if you've never tried to make anything in 3D before, you should give it a shot. Both Magic of Voxel and Blender are free, so there's no risk to try it out. By the way, this video is not sponsored by either of them. They were just the tools that I used, and I enjoyed them. Them. Thank you all very much for watching. I'd like to give an extra special shout out to my patrons, especially Abishan, Adam Edwards, David Scott, Elric, Nightfall, MLK, Nazar Salim and Salim, Ragnabro, Scott Hansen, and Soapy Gnome. You are all awesome people and I truly appreciate the support. If you'd like to play any of my games, you can visit vimlark.itch.io. To get in contact with me, you can stop by my Twitch stream, where I'm always doing something related to game dev, pixel art, game jams, and now 3D. Message me on Twitter, or join the Discord with some other really cool people. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing, and I will talk to you the next time. Have a good one. Later.